Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's Nest Forum. I'm Pamela Goldberg, President and CEO of the Medical Device Innovation Consortium, MDIC. We're excited to be able to come together virtually with stakeholders from across the country and around the world to share the latest advancement and practical uses of real world data and real world evidence. Real world evidence is a cornerstone of our work at MDIC as we seek new ways to advance regulatory science for the medical device ecosystem. Our mission is to accelerate and improve access to innovative, high quality, safe and effective medical technologies for the benefit of patients. Our initiatives to drive this important work span the areas of clinical science, health economics and patient value, data science and technology, and the National Evaluation System for Health Technology Coordinating Center, or NESCC. As you may know, in 2016, the FDA awarded MDIC a grant to establish the NEST Coordinating Center, and considerable progress has been made since that time, as NEST has formed a multi-stakeholder governing committee to ensure perspectives from all stakeholder groups would be reflected in NEST's work. We've developed the NEST Research Network with leading academic and health organizations to establish a strong foundation for innovative, high-quality, real-world data studies. We've published a research methods framework and data quality framework to promote scientific rigor in the execution of real-world evidence studies. And finally, we've launched two slates of pilot studies or test cases to provide proof of concept on the vision for NEST and develop learnings to inform future research. Today, we want to share with you not only the progress of NEST's efforts, but also a glimpse of what's next as we work together across the ecosystem to shape the future of medical device evaluation and innovation. Thank you again for joining us here at the NEST Forum and please join us in the conversation on Twitter throughout the day as well, using the hashtag NESTForum2020. With that, I'd like to introduce the opening session led by MDIC's Senior Vice President and Leader of NEST, Sandy Siami. Thank you, Pamela, for the introduction. And I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of our panelists and speakers that are participating today, as well as the larger medical device community for your attendance at our first forum. It's dedicated to the National Evaluation System for Health Technology, or NEST, and this forum will highlight our efforts from inception in order to build an environment of various sources of real world data to more efficiently generate real world evidence for medical device evaluation and regulatory decision making. I want to provide an overview for this afternoon. Our opening session is delivering the vision of NEST for the medical device ecosystem, where we'll discuss the purpose and evolution of NEST to date. We'll then take a deeper dive into five of our pilot or test cases where we will hear perspectives and lessons learned, both from our NEST team as well as from our proposal sponsors, our research network collaborators, and representatives from the FDA. And as we round out the afternoon, we'll have a summary of the current perspectives as well as future innovation and where NEST is going in the future as part of that closing session. In addition to the pre-recorded sessions, there will be an opportunity for live question and answer after each session, except this opening session. A key challenge across the medical device landscape is how to ensure timely access to technology while also providing evidence to guide safe and appropriate use. Traditional sources of evidence for pre-market approvals are costly, time-consuming, and it delays access for consumers and may not reflect a device's true risk benefit profile. Reliance on traditional clinical trials and passive surveillance of safety events has also limited the ability to generate evidence of longer term safety and durability of the devices following approval. The current fragmented healthcare ecosystem makes the seamless, timely, cost-effective use of health data to generate high-quality evidence more challenging, too. Therefore, 
to expedite the delivery of life-saving and quality of life enhancing medical devices to patients, public and private stakeholders are increasingly seeking to leverage evidence from non-traditional data sources. The FDA, specifically CDRH, has concluded that under the right conditions, studies using real-world data could provide valid scientific evidence to support regulatory decisions and has encouraged device manufacturers to use real-world evidence and regulatory submissions. And this is where NEST comes into play. NEST is an independent research organization tasked with driving quality and efficiency in the use of real-world data. This will inform medical device development and evaluation, as well as support clinical, patient, regulatory, and reimbursement decisions throughout the total product life cycle. Our mission is to catalyze the timely, reliable, and cost-effective development of real-world evidence to enhance regulatory and clinical decision-making. Our vision is to be the leading organization within health technology and the medical device ecosystem for conducting these efficient and timely, high quality, real world evidence studies throughout the total product life cycle. In 2012, the FDA first envisioned a national evaluation system, which would consist of a voluntary data network of collaborators. In 2016, that vision became a reality with funding from MADUFA dollars. In order to ensure success, the first two years of funding were devoted to defining our governance, implementing an optimal organizational structure and operating model in order to deliver on ongoing innovation and progress. As well as building our data and research networks, selecting and executing our test cases, performing a landscape analysis of real world evidence, as well as independent assessment of our test cases. We established two subcommittees, a research methods subcommittee and a data quality subcommittee. The charge and the vision of the methods subcommittee was to develop a living framework in benefit and risk studies, as well as safety signal detection. The subcommittee developed a research agenda for device imaging and other diagnostic technology studies. The data quality subcommittee developed the first simple pragmatic iteration of the NEST data quality framework that will apply to all of our research collaborators. They designed a process by which the collaborators can demonstrate their aptitude in the NEST data quality framework. Within the subcommittees, as you may have seen, in February 2020, we released our frameworks for research methods and data quality. The research methods framework is applicable to many different data sources and defines the key components of a study protocol for medical device evaluation. It outlined the evidentiary requirements for various data points and types of studies. The data quality framework initially focuses on uh, EHR data, electronic health record data in the care setting, and it considers data governance, characteristics, capture, transformation, and curation. The data quality maturity model addresses the varying stages of an organization's capacity to support these domains. Both of our subcommittees are currently working on the next iteration of our frameworks, and we're really excited. It was important for NEST to identify a research network that had different types of data and sources for unique data environments. Our current data network of 14 collaborators brings 141 million lives and the associated data with it. The different data sources include electronic health records, pharmacy data, public and private claims, registries, patient-generated data, unique device identifiers, as well as supplemental data such as billing, supply chain, and even genomic data. 
We continue to expand our research network and you'll see additional collaborators being added to our team late in 2020. Our 21 pilots were selected to ensure diversity with respect to product codes, therapeutic area or indication for use, as well as the stage of the total product life cycle and the regulatory pathway. Of these 21 pilot or test cases that NEST currently has experience with that are either completed or in progress, 14 represent pre-market or label expansion studies. This intentional diversity was not only part of our MADUFA commitment, but also to potentially uncover all the challenges so that we can then focus on solutions using real world data. This was also useful in order to socialize the types of real world evidence being generated to various review sections within the FDA and CDRH. In addition, we used different approaches in the types of data that was utilized to determine what works, what doesn't work, which is critical for how NEST pivots for the future. You can note there was diversity in the organizations who submitted the proposals, which include large, mid-size, and small industry partners, as well as the FDA and patient advocacy groups. These pilots are helping us to better identify the right type of data that is fit for purpose. These test cases have yielded and will continue to yield as we complete them. Key lessons learned informing NEST for our focus and our efforts. We've grappled with real and difficult issues and lessons learned. A few are listed here. There were technical challenges identified in connecting the siloed data across diverse sources and geographically disparate sites for research purposes and the related challenges that existed such as the lack of longitudinal data. There were also contractual challenges that were identified as we balanced issues of data ownership, data use, and data sharing. Some of our studies were considered phase one studies because it was required to determine the generation of sufficiently promising evidence in order to pursue a phase two of that study that would then lead to potential regulatory submission. We identified the need to potentially create a centralized research infrastructure where our participating research networks may contribute data. And this could help alleviate contracting issues related to data sharing. Our projects demonstrated the ability to facilitate collaborations between interdisciplinary team members across multiple networks and organizations. And the initial NEST research methods framework and data quality framework have a key role to play in defining the guidelines and principles for study design, as well as identifying the need for data standards. All of these lessons learned, including others that you will hear today, are important to build a better environment. NEST plays a critical role in the medical device and health technology ecosystem, as you will see with the rest of the sessions listed here. Before we take a deeper dive into some of the test cases with the remaining sessions, I wanna to move to our panel discussion that I'm thrilled about. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Let's first start with Adrian Hernandez. Hi there, I'm Adrian Hernandez, a, a cardiologist at Duke and the executive director for the Duke Clinical Research Institute. For NEST, I'm, the, I'm pleased to be the chair of the governing uh, council. And so really excited about where we've been for NEST and look forward to sharing more here. Thank you, Adrian. Next, we have Diane Wurzberger. Thanks, Sandy. Hi, I'm Diane Wurzberger. I'm the Regulatory Executive for GE Healthcare. I am the Vice Chair of the Governing Committee for NEST, and um, I am representing MIDA, the Medical Imaging Technology Alliance, um, on the Governing uh, Committee. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Next, we have Jennifer Kerr. Jennifer? 
Hey, Sandy, thank you. Hi, my name is Jennifer Kerr, and I am the president of Cook Research Incorporated. Um, I've been in um, clinical research for the past 25 years, so have uh, seen many different things um, transpiring over our, um, through the years, and um, what a great time to be talking about real world data. Um, I am not only representing Cook Medical, but I'm also representing MDMA, which is the Medical Device Manufacturers Association. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Danelle. Hi, I'm Danelle Miller, and I am Vice President, Global Regulatory Policy and Intelligence for Roche Diagnostics. And for the NEST Governing Committee, I represent AdvaMed. Great. Well, thank you to our panelists for your time today. Um, we'll start with some few directed questions for, for each of you, and then we'll go to a larger uh, kind of panel discussion. I'm, I'm interested to, to hear everybody's thoughts and perspectives today. So Adrian, as chair of our uh, NEST governing committee, in what ways has NEST delivered on its potential to impact the medical device ecosystem? <laughs> And in what ways can it continue to grow? Yeah, so uh, one of the things that's uh, happened over the last uh, several years is that the development of medical technology has really expanded. And so its impact uh, for patient care has grown and grown, but we don't necessarily have systems to be able to keep up with that. And so how do we learn and generate the evidence necessary so it can be informative to all the different stakeholders? And so what Ness has done uh, now is uh, been able to bring together all those different partners, so those who are inventing the new technology, as well as those who are going to be the users of that technology, to combine efforts to actually demonstrate and understand where and how they're effective. And so the NEST pilots actually show um, where that is possible and provides a proof of concept of how we can have a different research ecosystem to accelerate uh, the evidence generation necessary for medical technology. As we go forward, you know, what I hope is that we will see things uh, go faster. So now that we've seen like what's possible, how can we go faster? You always want us to go faster, Adrian. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Diane, as um, vice chair of our NEST governing committee, what do you see uh, as an area where NEST has made progress that might not otherwise be highlighted during today's session? Thanks. I think there's been significant progress in building out the capabilities and resources to move towards a financially self-sustaining model of NEST. And to that end, it was really exciting to see the launch of NEST 1.0 back in, um, in June, this past June. The team really, I think, doubled down over the last, really the last several months, the last year on efforts to make that milestone happen. So I think that's progress that we've all been waiting, waiting for, um, certainly in the industry. Um, I think as the work behind the scenes continues to refine the business model, the team has certainly provided stakeholders with um, a view to the value proposition, right? That is curating the quality evidence um, to support the, um, that meets our study objectives, I should say, of, of the stakeholders. And that will support, most importantly, um, the acceptance of that data for clinical and regulatory decisions. I also have to comment, um, there's been a lot of staffing changes there. The team also really focused on beefing up and onboarding staff and resources to support all this effort. And that includes um, the addition of you, Sandy, to the team. And I think uh, all of that has really uh, been a very positive direction and positive progress for NEST. Well, thank you, Diane, I appreciate that. Um, and the participants will hear more about NEST 1.0 during closing session too, uh, mm -hmm. as we uh, talk about the future. Um, so, Danelle, um, from uh, AdvaMed's uh, perspective, uh, putting on that hat, uh, how do you see the NEST test cases, um, you know, five of which are going to be highlighted today, uh, how do you see those test cases influencing how device manufacturers consider the use of real-world evidence in uh, the regulatory process in the future? Thanks for asking the question, Sandy. I think that the five test cases are a really good starting point. 
they should give us an idea of the availability and access to the data, which is a starting point for us. I think what industry is going to be very interested in seeing is the relevance and reliability of the data in answering the questions that are posed in the test cases, as well as the acceptability to the US FDA in terms of how they can support regulatory decisions. It's a great place to start and we're anxious to see. Thank you very much. Uh, along those same lines, um, Jennifer, what do you think the, the medical device industry would want to see from Nest in its current state? Um, and how can we continue to meet and even exceed the needs of medical device manufacturers? Great question to ask. Um, as Diane uh, mentioned, there has been a significant change at Nest um, in the past few months. And um, I, I think that is a critical point in this conversation because where we are today is um, you have shared some of those lessons learned and you are being transparent in that. And that is a, an important piece for the industry to understand is this isn't an easy road to go. And every single case is different, every single one of them, every single experience. And so I think it's really important to continue to find ways through these test cases to identify examples that med tech can see themselves in. So they, they see a reflection and, and say, okay, I could see how my product could be used in that type of situation. And so as these test cases evolve and they continue to move from a, an initial phase to a second phase or they close out and a new one gets picked up, it's, it's asking med tech understanding who the audience is and aligning those examples with the, the spectrum of, of our industry um, and continuing to be transparent and continuing to um, adjust and acknowledge those adjustments along the way. Um, because, because again, um, every experience is gonna be unique. So Diane, um, how, how does the work that NEST is currently doing and the work that our subcommittees for research methods and data quality are doing, how does that align with MIDA's strategic priority to develop standards to ensure patient safety and timely access to the market? A good question. I, I actually think there is alignment there. Um, as you noted, one of MIDA's strategic priorities um, for our diagnostic imaging industry is the development of standards that will establish performance requirements for the imaging devices. As an industry, our reliance on these technical standards, as well as those developed by um, organizations such as IEC or ISO, will drive consistency among the devices, safety, quality, and performance. Um, and I think that combination really provides a level of confidence for regulators, as well as the users of the devices and patients in the end. Um, in, in how we are designing and manufacturing those innovations. So ultimately, that level of confidence um, and that consistency among devices drives our ability to efficiently bring these innovations to the market and most importantly, um, allow us to give timely access to patients um, to these important innovations. I think that the frameworks that have been established by the NSTC's subcommittees on research methods and data quality requirements are serving the same purpose, if you will. I think those standards, those methodologies and frameworks will absolutely drive consistency and quality in the study protocol design and evidence criteria, um, as well as the uh, consistency in the process, right, among the data network collaborators. All of that, again, is gonna raise the level of quality and reliability and stakeholder confidence in the evidence that's generated there. And, and hopefully will lead to efficient and timely regulatory decisions and market access, timely market access, I should say, of, those, of the innovations that we are um, actually trying to support through the process. So I do think they're aligned. Great, thank you, Diane. So Danelle, what limitations or barriers do you see for the adoption of real world evidence uh, across the total product life cycle? And how do you see nest helping to overcome those or do you i think that's a great question you know real world evidence is so important i think to industry to patients to the healthcare ecosystem to uh, to fda 
Um, and I would say it's probably not limitations and barriers as much as considerations. Um, let me just run through just a few. Um, one is really access to the specific device or IVD data. I mean, when you think about the number of devices out there and the number of in vitro diagnostics, being able to tell exactly which one was used on which patient is absolutely critical to determining how, you know, whether that real world evidence is usable for a specific question on a device. And so that's going to be very important and that's going to require using unique device identifiers. And in the case of IVDs could mean both unique ide device identifiers as well as LOINC codes. Um, so that's very important. I think there's also needing the assurance of quality data. And I know that Nest is really focused on making sure that there is quality data in these data collaborators databases and that's going to be very key to whether industry and whether and how much industry will look to nest as as one of the sources of real world evidence um, i think another thing which really is not something that nest can really do but is really the experience that we have with fda in using this data because the importance to industry is getting real world evidence that, Dave, that FDA will see as acceptable for regulatory decision making. And that means, is it the right relevance and reliability? Is it the right quality? You know, and those are things that I think only experience with Nest and with the FDA is going to tell us. And of course, last but not least is speed and cost. I go, it boils down to how quickly can we run these real world evidence studies in the Nest um, um, among the NEST collaborators and how much is it going to cost and how does that compare to doing a clinical trial, um, how is the data quality and the cost, et cetera, et cetera. So, so those things start to be considerations. Now, I think NEST can, through the process, do things to make this, um, I think, to, to address some of these considerations. One is to ensure that institutions are programming in the UDI and the LOINC code in the case of IVDs, and that they're addressing the relevant data elements that FDA has, has deemed important for regulatory decision making. And honestly, that's just experience with different types of devices and things that they're doing. I think also working more closely with the FDA and getting getting FDA more comfortable with NEST and with the quality of the data that's there. I know one of the projects right now is the MDIC real world evidence project looking at taking real world evidence to get an EUA um, IVD test to clearance. Um, through, through clearance um, with FDA. FDA is at the table. I know some of the NEST collaborators are at the table and you know industry is at the table and it's trying to work together to see how can we use NEST as a foundation to get to the performance of one of these um, COVID-19 or serology tests. So this, I think this kind of experience is exactly what industry needs to see. And I think what will help us address those considerations that I laid out up front. So you bring up uh, a lot of initiatives too that Nest is, is working on for the future. And so we'll hear a little bit more about those in, in our closing session. Uh, but all good points and, and thinking for, for how we pivot to the future. And I think that's quite, quite important. Uh, Jennifer, if I could please uh, go to you uh, as being a recent ad addition to our NEST governing committee, what areas are you most excited to participate moving forward? Having just joined within the past um, two months, it is really incredible to be in kind of on the other side and being able to see the tremendous amount of work and effort that has been occurring in the last eight, 12 um, weeks. And with that kind of energy and enthusiasm, uh, in addition to the um, NEST Governing Committee and the support from MDIC, I, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like in another year and what those test cases are going to be and what has been learned from these experiences. I, I continue to be amazed at the working relationship 
that um, NEST and MDIC is able to maintain across so many different disciplines. And bringing, where could you have an experience with the regulators that you are working with literally every day? And if it's not you, it's someone in your team. And I, I just, I think those are um, priceless encounters. And really when, when you look at it, it is also or these relationships of individuals, those of us who are on this um, panel, where we truly want this to work. We see that this has to work. And so um, for me, I am continuing to kind of take things in and, and understand it and figure out um, how best to, to offer suggestions. But what I'm seeing so far is um, we're trying to learn from the lessons. And um, uh, Danielle has done a beautiful job talking about UDI. Well, there's a collaborative community that's starting in October around UDI. And so taking those experiences, those um, um, road bumps, if you wanna call them, and, and saying, what can we do to solve this? so that other people don't have to try to solve it on their own. And that's really where I, I see that, that NEST can bring so much to our industry is being able to forge ahead and move through those roadblocks and say, you know what, this might not be the path to go um, right at first. So we need to work on a few things here before it can be successful. Or we need to keep going this direction and we will work to improve something. And so that's where I, I think that um, it's so exciting is to identify what that roadblock is, allow NEST to work through it and clear it out for others in med tech to, to be able to, to move um, quickly through, um, through you know, whatever need they, they have. Um, I think this is an incredibly exciting time. I, I think that the last several months within our own country and in, in the world as, as we've lived through um, COVID-19 is we've recognized the importance of data and the need for data. And we're not going to go back to the way that we have historically captured data or even gathered data. We are going to move into a whole new realm. And so um, the opportunity to um, move through that quickly um, to solve the problems and that it's going to meet that need for FDA. So um, I think I think the sky's the limit to um, uh, honestly, great picture behind you, of course. Um, and um, I'm just I'm just super excited to, to be able to help and be able to be a participant. So thank you. Well, I appreciate those comments, including the picture in the background. Um, <laughs> But I think you, you bring up a lot of really uh, good points here of what we've tried to achieve and certainly learning from the lessons. Uncovering challenges was part of our charge, I think. Um, and once we uncover them, what are the potential solutions? Uh, and uh, one of the advantages I think NEST has and MDIC, which is why I think NEST sitting within MDIC is, is um, important <clears throat> is because we have access to various folks within the FDA to be able to socialize the need for real world evidence, what it might look like, so that when uh, a submission crosses their desk, so to speak, um, they'll be prepared for it. And we're also able to connect um, industry participants who need the right connections within. Um, the FDA. And I think that's, that's an important piece of it too. And to your point, uh, Jennifer, COVID has, has definitely accelerated the need and has accelerated real world evidence and real world data into the limelight, so to speak, to, to, to be able to get that information and, and do that work. So great insights, uh, even if you're just two months in. That's, <laughs> so thank you. Um, and finally, before we go into our group uh, discussions, Adrian, if I could ask you to put on a different hat um, and uh, as, a, as your role as a, as a network, as a representative of a network collaborator of NEST, can you share what the Duke team has taken away from participating in multiple test case projects or our pilot projects? 
Yeah, so one of the things that's really exciting for the Duke team to be part of this is that people want to be on the cutting edge of medical technology as well as uh, knowledge generation. Uh, so we have a community of patients that we care for. We want to know um, how's the best way to treat them. What are the things that we should offer them? And so for us to be part of this, you know, we are learning what are actually the really important issues that um, stakeholders are trying to address, whether it's a medical device manufacturer, whether it's the FDA, or whether it's a patient groups. And so for us to kind of triangulate that and kind of learn with the data that we have, how we can actually help address some of those gaps is really important. We also know that it, some things are, are hard. And so uh, while there's maybe a question or an issue that we see as either clinicians or we learn about uh, from others, uh, that we have to have different ways of uh, essentially making sure that we have high quality data that's actually part of routine care. So then we can really become a learning health system. So the example of UDI, there's so many different implications for that. So how do we make sure that's incorporated in every service line that we have? Because as we see some of these test cases come through, we recognize that those are the issues that we need to uh, address and it needs to be integrated in terms of our healthcare delivery. Thank you, uh, Adrian. And certainly we've mentioned uh, during the course of our panelists discussions, UDI several times, um, and Jennifer even alluded to the collaborative community. So I hope our participants do stay tuned all the way through closing session. Uh, so we'll cover a little bit more about what that is uh, that folks are talking about right now. Based on uh, your insights uh, from Duke, Adrian, I think now for the larger panel discussion, it, it really segues in nicely of of what we've learned um, and how we can pivot to doing things better um, in, in incorporating. So I'd like to ask the group uh, as a larger panel, uh, what's the biggest opportunity ahead in using real world evidence uh, for the med tech and medical device industry? And, and what do we see as our biggest challenges? So I'll start with throwing one out there. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest opportunities is is keeping a pace with and supporting the, the cycle of innovation. I mean, things are, we are developing innovations at a, a tremendous pace and with the, you know, with digital solutions coming on board, and especially with artificial intelligence, I think there's a need to have access to data for data sets, right? Not only for training, for development of those tools, and for, again, hitting those, those innovations, bringing them to the market. So partnership with the agencies, um, the access to that data is gonna be really critical for, for the med tech industry go forward. Yeah. From a, um, go ahead, Adrian. From a healthcare system perspective, and one of the things that we are really interested in is, you know, how do we um, accelerate the expanded indications and Evans uh, supporting that. And so, you know, often, you know, we see, uh, innovations coming into a more narrow population, but our clinicians see the opportunities around other areas. And so how do we have a system that would be able to expand um, the indications um, rapidly with the evidence necessary for regulatory decision making? So that would be uh, really important for us from a healthcare system perspective. And I think building on both of what um, Adrian and Diane said, I think there's really two things that I see. One is using real world evidence to give you a more heterogeneous population than you can get in clinical studies and to bring in data actually supporting um, submissions of some of these innovative products. I think the second part of this is it also allows agencies to take a, a bit more risk on some of these really innovative products that you're going to see um, how they perform in the real world, such as artificial intelligence, for example, where you can come in with a certain level of analytical and clinical validity, but you can then show how it performs with real world evidence in, and in, in, you know, the standard setting. So that kind of use, I think both on the front end and the back end can be incredibly helpful, I think, to spur innovation um, and the iteration that the future innovations are going to have. Sandy, just to add maybe a little bit more to the biggest challenge um, as well as the biggest opportunity, uh, I think it's the uh, potentially the same thing and it's the the rapid generation of information, the rapid generation of data is our biggest challenge because it's coming faster 
than um, it came yesterday and the year before, and it will be different in a year from now. And that um, in and of itself um, can cause um, con concern in that what if the information is, is not available, it's not um, uh, accessible. And I think that with, with Nest, it's, as well as with um, global regulators and in particular FDA, is, is recognizing that we need to be able to identify those data providers, those network collaborators that we can really stand behind and, and, and appreciate they understand how to capture the data, where it's being captured, the quality of it. Because I, I think all of us could probably easily admit that if we didn't get a phone call today, we probably got a phone call earlier this week from someone, uh, an organization that said, um, we can get data for you. What kind of data do you need? Well, what do you have? Well, what do you need? It, and, and so we, the, the way that I, that I see that Nest can play such a critical part is identify those providers point to those providers that FDA feels comfortable with that can demonstrate that quality, that methodology. And maybe it becomes the good housekeeping seal for, for, for Nest that um, these are the providers. And then over time that grows, it grows to other countries, it grows to um, other organizations. So that information as, as you said, Danielle, that um, comes together to, to become real world evidence. Um, from those from those different different places, and so um, again, it's it's recognizing that we can't get our arms around everything, but let's get our arms around the good things and the trustworthy things, and um, and and use that to go after expanded indications to build that confidence um, with our our regulatory reviewers that um, these these data do tell a story um, and can be can be combined with the other information to gain an approval, expand an approval, make claims, or um, uh, meet the needs on the insurance and reimbursement side. One thing to add to Jennifer's comments is that, you know, one thing that COVID-19 has shown us is that it is really important to have trustworthy data, uh, that the data provenance matters, the quality of the data matters, and the methods matter. And so as we go forward for NEST, those are three themes that everyone should see that we're really prioritizing. And so that's um, why the collaborators are coming together. We recognize that there's actually a patient on the other end of these decisions that come out of the uh, questions that we answer. And so that's always on our minds. And I think that's important. That's actually a nice segue. Uh, you know, I always talk about patient being the end user uh, but this is a nice segue, too, in discussing, I think, you, both uh, Adrian and Jennifer, you both kind of hit on it, uh, what might be Nest's most imp important areas for growth in the years ahead. Maybe just one, from my side, one last comment related to that is, I think it'll be important for Nest to continue to differentiate itself. You know, there are other, um, as Jennifer noted, other entities, right, other organizations that are popping up now. Um, with a, you know, trying to have a model similar to, let's say, you know, the curation of data and um, to what Nest is doing. And we just need to continue to differentiate that and get that messaging out there as to what Nest brings um, to stakeholders. And to Adrian's, uh, to Adrian's point, I think that part of what we want Nest to bring to that is the quality of the data. And so it's really um, wonderful to see the focus that I know the staff is having right now and working with the institutions to ensure that the quality is there. And I think um, to add to that, that as far as growth opportunities, Sandy, I think that we will see that unfold um, because again, Nest is uh, almost anticipates seeing it. Um, and um, because again, crossing so many different data providers, um, so much input from industry and the diversity of the, in, of, of the industry, as you said at the beginning, you know, from, from small medical device companies to larger device medical companies, so um, to multinationals, to, um, you know, startups that, you know, are, are literally just, you know, bringing it um, right out of, um, you know, their benchtop work. So you're, we're recognizing that um, the, the issues are going to start um, becoming, um, I think, uh, more um, obvious in NEST. 
And what I hope to see is uh, other opportunities for those collaborative communities, those opportunities to, to build a, a team around it to go out and solve that while others are continuing to, to forge ahead in, in, in other areas. And um, I know all of us could probably identify three or four or five other challenges in, in the space around um, clinical research and um, uh, outcomes that we could we could put on the list for nest um, um, but you know just watching understanding recognizing those those challenges and then forming a group that cross-functional group and letting it go out and and try to um, solve it for the the the, the greater good of, of medtech this has been an excellent opening session and panelist uh, discussion. Um, I can uh, assure folks that our test case discussions are gonna be equally engaging and I welcome folks um, to stay for the rest of the afternoon. And I thought this was a great kickoff to our afternoon. I wanna thank our esteemed panelists for their perspectives, their engagement, uh, their support, identifying uh, challenges and, and areas for growth as, as we continue to pivot NEST for the future. Enjoy the rest of our, our session. Uh, note the remainder of the sessions will have time for live Q&A at the end of each session. So I look forward to your active engagement. Thank you so much. <laughs>